Hi hippies, welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's Courtney Shavante here and I'm back with another amazing tutorial for you guys. Today we are going to be working on some wine bottle stoppers. Super exciting, right? All right, so to get started, these are the five that came in. This is kind of what the pack came with. It came with five molds and it came with five of the little chrome bottle stoppers. And I'm actually only going to be using three today because I didn't want to make all five at once. So let's hop on in. First, I prepped 80 milliliters of resin. I made sure that I used the two-part epoxy, um, so the one-to-one -one ratio. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a bit of resin to the bottom of this mold here. And then I placed a flower. I'm using the same stir stick to press the flower down as far as I can. I'm trying to get it as close to the surface of the mold as possible. Do make sure that your flower is actually face down for that part. Now, after I get my flower where I want it, I'm just going to come in with these little gold foil flakes and kind of add them in all around behind my flower. So that way it just adds a little bit more dimension to my piece and it makes it look a little bit more interesting. So after I finish um, adding that in, I'm also going to add in a bit of glitter. Now this glitter mix that I have right here, um, I believe this is the Baby Please that I have available in my Etsy shop. But I don't have too many more left of it, so make sure you do hop on that. Um, but yeah, after I finished adding in a little bit of that glitter mix, I went ahead and filled that mold to about half away with the resin and then I just moved it over to the side. Next, I'm taking this round mold here, and this one is completely round. It's like the spear-shaped one. I put a little bit of resin in, and I just kind of swirled it all around so that way the resin is um, touching all sides of the mold. And then I'm taking my pressed flowers, and I'm actually just kind of gently pressing them up against the sides of the mold. Um, I'm trying not to leave too much dead space because I want the flowers to be sort of like a little like so like a little flower bulb that's sort of the intentions behind this and everything so like I said I'm just making sure these flowers are pressed up against the sides of the mold and I'm using my stir stick to make sure that I press out any excess bubbles because if bubbles do get trapped in there then they can move which will really disrupt the overall look that I'm going for with this particular piece so yeah just make sure that you're being mindful and do take your time with that and everything. I love using these particular larkspur flowers because it's very easy to bend them without the petals breaking off. So that's totally a win right there. Um, after you get all your flowers in place and you have it how you like it, I'm going to suggest that you add in the foil and the glitter next because after that you should still have the little resin that's floating around in there and everything and this is going to make it easier for it to stick to the sides without the bubbles like I was telling you before. We're going to go in with that same glitter mix too and we're just going to kind of swirl everything all around once we get it in there. Don't use too much glitter because you don't want it to overpower and you don't want it um, to like take away from the flowers. Go ahead and pour the resin in there until it's just about full. You don't want to completely fill it so leave a little bit of space in there for the stopper. Next, take your next mold. This is a spear shape too, but it is faceted, so it's going to have the flat sides on there. Swirl a little bit of resin around and then just add in a tiny, tiny bit of glitter so that way you can coat the sides with it and just twirl it, twirl it, twirl it like you see me doing. And this is just an easy little hack to make things easier. Next, I'm grabbing this alcohol ink. I have two shades of purple and this fuchsia color, and I'm just going to start dropping that in along with the white. Um, I start with the colors first and then I put the white on top and then I'm going to go in with a little bit of resin to make sure that you know I start pushing the alcohol ink down towards the bottom of the mold and you're just going to keep repeating those steps so just keep adding the alcohol inks pouring the resin alcohol inks and then resin and you're going to do that until it's just about filled feel free to add in a little bit more glitter if you want to as well you just want to be very very careful not to overfill this mold and that's really what's key here 
I really really love this technique for alcohol inks just because of all the interesting colors and everything that it adds so when you drop the resin down on top of it it forces the alcohol ink to not just sit on the top and just kind of disperse itself throughout the resin and if you've ever seen like maybe um, milk or something like that move throughout water it does like an effect like that and it's really really cool because the more colors that you add um, the more interesting it looks so definitely play around to see what color blends and choices work with you don't be afraid to reference a color chart either okay so I waited about six hours for this part to cure um, sometimes it takes a little bit less sometimes not but then I went ahead and whipped up about 20 milliliters of resin here and I'm going to go ahead and add in my mica powder, my alcohol inks, and also any glitter that I do want to add to. You're going to mix this up really, really well and make sure that, you know, there aren't any bubbles in there or anything like that. And once you have all your colors blended how you like, you're just going to go ahead and pour this colored resin on top of the flowers and the foils that we did previously and you're going to fill the mold to where it's almost full but like I said with the other ones that we did go ahead and get to this point we well I'm sorry the other two that we did do we don't want to completely fill you want to fill until it's almost filled because it's very important that you have space in there for the little chrome stoppers that we are going to be adding in. All right, so now that everything is nice and cured and we have everything at the same level, we're going to go ahead and place in these chrome stoppers. So I'm pulling them all out of the wrappers and this is what they look like. As you can see, they fit in here beautifully, which I was concerned about. So it's good that I don't have to like force it in there and um, almost get any air bubbles or anything like that because I wasn't sure how that would work out with this being my first time using these. So what I'm doing first is I'm going to go ahead and fill these to pretty much the rim um, with some clear resin and then I just kind of place the stopper directly into the resin. You see me kind of checking to see if things are overflowing. Um, keep in mind if it does come over where the little silicone rim is then you are going to have a little bit of overage. So just be careful with that and scrape off any excess that you do that you do see starting to come from out of the mold so that way it does not cure with your actual piece. Okay hippies, so I let all three of these cure for 24 hours minimum, especially since, you know, it's going to take a lot of tugging to kind of get these out. I didn't want anything breaking off just in case it wasn't completely cured, so I do suggest making sure you wait the 24 hours. Now, demolding these were a bit of a challenge. These are actually the hardest things that I have ever demolded before and each of them were pretty difficult. But basically what I did was I just kind of start pulling and tugging at the sides. I get my nail under there and start kind of moving it around to try to loosen it up around the rim. And then after I work the rim off, from there I'm able to kind of pull it down, sort of like taking off some tight jeans or something like that. Like just really get in where you can fit in and try to ease it off the best you can. Now this particular one, the non the non spherical looking one, um, this one was actually the hardest to demold. I saved it for last because I thought it was going to be the easiest. I tried to go in order of, um, you know, hardest to easiest, but it actually did not work out that way. So I just kind of want you guys to have a heads up regarding that. But, you know, if you do take your time and if you do do what I tell you to do as far as like, you know, starting at the sides and working your way down and just, you know, exuding some patience, you will definitely be able to get that off cleanly and you won't have to worry about any tears within the mold or anything like that. So just w take your time and let it pop on out. It'll be so satisfying once you do get it out. Ta-da! 
okay hippies so this is the first one that turned out this is the one that's completely spherical and it has the flowers and the foils and the glitter in here i love how the flowers really stuck to the side of the mold so i'm really glad i was able to get those bubbles out and i love how it's just different from all the different sides i like how the glitter and the foils add you know some more dimension in there but you can still pretty much like kind of see through to the other side as long as it's an open space i just think this is so so cute it's so girly and it's just really screaming bougie hippie and it's, it's a vibe right it's totally a vibe all right so our second piece this is the one that we did in the two different layers i love how clear cut the layers are on here especially along these facets um across here it's so so gorgeous like this purple i am eating it up you know purple is my favorite color and as you turn it to the front you can see the flower right here on top and i feel like that looks so pretty like inside of a wine bottle and everything i like how the foils and the glitter really complement the flower i'm kind of annoyed with how the flower did rise up and move a bit so i guess i didn't get all the air bubbles out but you know just try to be mindful of that and everything but yeah i feel like this one was a winner too so let's go ahead and move on to our third piece this right here is our spear faceted one. I am obsessed with this one. This one is probably my absolute favorite. I really love how the alcohol inks look on here. Like look how they're just kind of dragging from the top to the bottom and the glitter comes in there and kind of disrupts it. And it's just so beautiful. I love how the glitter is just like kind of really sitting at the center of it. It looks sort of like a glittery bougie eyeball, if you will. Like. It's kind of hard to see on here, but there's actually um, a bit of an empty space behind the glitter too, just from when the resin was forcing itself down. And this is something that I could look at like when I'm like kind of zooted and everything and I'll just sit there and stare at it. But yeah, I love them. I hope you love them. This is how they look all together, all three of them. I feel like they make a nice little set. If you're rocking with this tutorial, make sure you leave me a like and a comment. You know I love hearing from you hippies and thank you guys so much for your support thus far. Until next time, mwah, XO, XO.